There's a simple formula in our gospel reading today. Jesus is speaking, and he's teaching, and he's telling us uh, a simple formula for living. The first thing that we need to do is abide in his love. Abide in his love. The second thing is keep his commandments, which he goes on to say is really about love, to keep his commandment to love. And the third thing in this formula is that our lives should bear fruit. Now, we are to do these things in order, as I see and understand this gospel reading. The first thing we ought to do is abide in the love of Christ. If we understand that word, that means to live in the love of Christ, not just to know it and appreciate it and have some devotion to it, but to to place our lives in that understanding that we are made to love Christ. We are to live in that knowledge and that understanding. If we do that, we understand that, then the next step following the commandments that Jesus gave us are easy. Because we naturally, we love, we understand love, and we are loving. And if we do those first two steps, the third one just comes naturally. Fruit. Fruit in our lives. Our lives bear fruit. Our lives are lives of blessings that pour out onto other people. This love of God, this love of Christ that we are live in, and that we share, and that we understand and appreciate, flows out of us as fruit for the world and for our own lives. Simple formula. But can we do it? We could probably quickly say, oh, sure, I can do that. I can live in Christ. I can follow his commandments, especially that loving part. And sure, I can see and appreciate fruit in my own life. But I think it's a little harder than we might imagine when we really think about it. Put Christ first in your life. We hear this in so many ways in Scripture. We hear it so often when we come to church. We know these commandments of God. We know what Christ taught us about uh, picking up our cross and following him, but it's actually more difficult than we say at first, um, first glance. Do you remember the call of the disciples when, when Jesus was traveling around and he was teaching uh, about the kingdom of God and he realized that he needed some helpers on this journey and he called some disciples? He did not call the wealthy. He did not call the most educated He did not call those who were philosophers or had some great uh, deep understanding. He called very, very simple people, fishermen, to follow him, to learn from him, to live in his love. When he called these fishermen to follow him, they simply let down their nets and followed him. They let down their old lives and followed him. They let down everything that they had planned for their own lives, their own future, their own understanding of what they were to do with their lives. They laid that down on the ground and they turned into a new direction and they followed Jesus Christ. They had no idea where they were going, but they heard that command to lay down their lives and follow him, and they did it. It's difficult for us to do that. We are like those fishermen in many ways in that we are not very sophisticated, most of us. But the thought of just kind of letting go of all the things that we thought we ought to do in our lives and just looking at Christ for our direction is really challenging. There are so many things in this world that are competing for our love, competing for our attention, competing for our loyalty, to put God first in our lives. is something that we can say so easily, but doing it 
is more challenging. If someone asked you today, stopped you and asked you a question, have you put God first in your life? Is God the primary thing in your life that orders all the things that you think about and do and your actions every day, your desires are shaped because of that primary thing? Are you putting God first in your life? How would you answer that question? Recently, I listened to a podcast. Most of you know what a podcast is. It's just a recorded message that are available uh, on the internet and other places that uh, different speakers offer. You can find all kinds of podcasts uh, on all kinds of topics, and I enjoy listening to them. It's a fun way if I'm traveling somewhere or doing something, exercising, maybe even just to listen to a podcast. Recently, I heard a very interesting one by a man named Andy Couturier. I had never heard of him before. I listened to this podcast, but I was so intrigued and drawn into his message. Andy Couturier is a writer. He writes and he teaches other people how to write. Creative writing is his specialty. And he loves writing, and he loves uh, helping other people experience the joy of writing. And he was telling about his story, and I found it most fascinating. He and his wife uh, left their home and left their jobs and moved to Japan for a while to teach English. And their purpose primarily in moving to Japan uh, to teach was to save money, which they did. They worked in Japan for a few years. And then they came back to the United States, uh, and they wanted to move to California, and they took the money that they had saved uh, while working in Japan and bought some land, I think about 25 acres in California. And he says it was literally in the middle of nowhere. The cheapest land they could find they bought in California, and they wanted to make their home there. And then they set about building their home. And the thing that was most interesting to me is that they made a decision to build their home themselves, doing all the work themselves, with hand tools. No power tools. No electricity on their property. Build all their, everything, every board, everything that had to be cut with hand saws. And they uh, researched and, and learned how to do these things. It didn't come naturally for them. They learned how to build their home, and he talked about how much they loved their home. They had placed every board in it, every nail in it, every shingle on the roof they had placed there themselves, and they were invested in it. And he said, I wish I could explain to you how much I love my home. I was impressed by that. Then he goes on to sort of compare. It was a conscious decision, not that they couldn't get power tools. They wanted to be invested in it. He goes on to compare his life, which is very different than ours, I'm quite sure, to what he would sort of consider ordinary lives like yours and mine. We would not, most of us necessarily, choose to live off the grid. We would not necessarily choose to do something radical to save money so that we could buy our home outright without a mortgage or go to the trouble of uh, building it ourselves. But he said there's something wonderful in that. And he went on to sort of explain a little more about that. His message to us, to his listeners, and I received this, his message was not a Christian message. But I understood it in my own Christian understanding, in my Christian context. And I internalized it in a very spiritual way. He says that most of us need to do one thing first, and that is to slow down. Slow down the way you are living. Pay attention to your life. Pay attention to what you do every day. Pay attention to the people you are speaking to. Pay attention to your family. Pay attention to your community the opportunities that you have, and the things that just maybe even accidentally happen to you. Pay attention to that. Slow down. 
We cannot pay attention to our lives if we're moving faster and faster and faster, which is the way most of us are living our lives. Slow down. And he says, if you slow down and pay attention, even the most mundane things that you do in your life, like washing dishes, you can find joy in that and pleasure in that. We live lives in the fast lane, most of us. Even if we are retired, we are probably very busy moving, doing all kinds of things, filling our lives with all kinds of things. This speaker, this writer says, if we are moving in the fast lane and we are doing more and more and more, sometimes our priorities get out of line. We forget who we are. We forget even what we want to do with our lives because we are just doing, doing, doing more and more and more. We want efficiency and we find things that make our lives easier, things that we can get in an instant. We order things online so we don't have to go shopping. We do everything we can, our meals prepared in advance so we don't have to do that, living more and more efficient. But what for? to add more things that just fill up our lives. And he says, and I think rightly so, that many of us are just miserable for that very reason, that we're adding more and more and more into our lives and not paying attention to who we are and what we're doing and what we love and what are our priorities in life. Then he goes on to say, what we all need to do is to pause and review our lives. Pause and review our lives. Stop and take notice of what we are doing. Now, in the church, we do this periodically. We invite you, our scripture readings, our liturgical rhythm, our prayers even invite us as Christians at times to pause and to review our lives and pay attention to our lives. Most notably, we do that in the season of Lent. Probably a lot of you think Lent is about feeling guilty. And that's not really what it's all about. It's really about stopping where we are for a moment and breathing and reviewing our lives. What are we doing in our lives? Do we really need to be doing all of these things that we are doing day after day, week after week, year after year? So I want to put Andy's words a little more in a Christian context, if I may, and ask you to review your lives. Think about what you do every day. Think about your calendar, the things you have planned Think about the appointments that you make every day and every week and every month. Think about your bank account, how you spend your money, how you deal with the resources that God has given you, who you spend your time with, who are your friends, where are you connected. Think about your church, your commitment here, your involvement here. How do these things for you, as a Christian, reflect putting God first in your life? Does your calendar show that you are putting God first? Does your bank account show that you are putting God first? Does the way you spend your weekends show that you are putting God first in your life? And really, ask yourself the question, is this really the way I want to live? The way I've been doing it? moving faster and faster, life on the treadmill, the gerbil wheel, going faster and faster, doing more and more, more contacts, more emails, more things that I have to get done. Pause. Think about this gospel reading today. Abide in God's love. Abide in the love of Christ. Live his commandments, loving is our life bearing fruit? Or is it just busy doing mindless things? We have no idea what we are doing or where we are going in our lives.
I want to invite you to look again at this collect, this prayer that we began our worship with. It's really one of the most beautiful ones and most packed with uh, stuff to think about. I always love to come back and look at it again. You'll find it in your bulletin right after the Gloria, bottom of page two. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Wow, there's a lot in there. God has prepared things for us in our lives that surpass our understanding. Not our plans, but what God has planned for us. Pour yourself into us, O oh God, so that we may love you in all things and above all things. And doing that, find joy and fulfillment and blessings beyond anything that we could imagine or desire or even pray for. Live in the love of Christ. Be filled with joy. Review your life, come back to God, and bear fruit. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.